All right, I'm going to go ahead and create a conceptual mass that has parameters and family types. And we're going to do just an L-shaped building and control um, the heights of some of the edges and maybe the width of it. So to do that, we're going to start a new conceptual mass family here. Double click on the mass RFT. And the first thing I'm going to do is change my background to white. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. It's just better for the video and I, I actually prefer it. And then I'm going to go to my level one view. So I'm going to look down on this level here. And I'm going to create a model line on level one, just sort of down in this corner. So left click, left click, not being, you know, overly precise about how big things are. And once I get to that point, I'm going to select modify to stop the the line command and then I'm going to tab until I select this single line and I'm going to change that to 30 using the listening dimension and then I'm going to select this single line here and I'm going to change that to 70 so it's going to move whichever line I have selected obviously and then I can tab select that line change that to 30 right and then I can tab select that line and change it to 70 so we've got sort of an even L there <clears throat> once I'm done with that I'm going to go back to my 3D parallel view this bracketed view double click on that in the project browser select that outline and go to create form and it's going to shoot that form up in the air 40 feet. You can see by the listening dimension here. I only want it to be 20 feet tall, so I'm going to left click on that listening dimension and type 20. All right. I'm going to go ahead and make that, that dimension permanent by selecting the dimension icon right there. And now it will show up, you know, whenever, even if I'm not selected on the object. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is move each of these edges up. So I'll make a butterfly roof with the valley right here at the elbow. So if I pick that edge and I go to my listening dimension and I type in 30, it not only deletes that dimension because it's, <clears throat> it's altered it, but it also facets that edge, right? So what we need to do is we need to actually split this piece before we can get this to come up evenly and that to come up evenly and have a valley right there. So I'm going to control Z out of that. And the way we add an edge here is you select the uh, form, go to form element and there's an add edge. If you click on that it's going to add a vertical edge. So I'm just going to come in here and left click and it's going to add that edge and you're going to see I have two different faces here now. <clears throat> Now you don't want to add any more edges so go ahead and hit escape twice and then what we want to do is we want to make sure that that edge is lined up with that face so we're going to use the align command to do that and it's up here in your modify so if you select align the thing you want to pick first is the thing that you do not want to move is sort of hierarchically more important so I'm going to pick that face and then I'm going to pick that edge and it's going to give me a lock option first thing it's going to do is going to align them and then it's going to give me a lock option. So I'm going to lock it. Okay. Now, once I have that done, I can come in and I can pick this edge, right? And change that listening dimension to 30. And it's going to um, raise that up, but it's also going to delete this dimension over here because it has issues with having that thing uh, be the same height. So, Let's go ahead and select this guy and change that to, so let's say, 30, right? And so now we're getting a nice sort of butterfly edge right there, all right, with that break in the middle, okay? So the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and um, move this guy to this corner right here. So I'm going to go into my level one and I'm just going to window around them and I'm going to go under my modify and go to move and I'm going to pick that corner and just move it 
right to that intersection. Okay, so once we've got that done, I'm going to go back to my 3D view and I'm going to align um, some of these ends to these reference planes just to keep it locked down. So again, the align command, align with that reference plane, that face, lock it. Align with that reference plane, that face, lock it. Align with that reference plane, that face, and lock it. So now that thing is sort of, those faces are locked to those reference planes. All right, so <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is I want to create parameters that control the heights of these sort of butterfly wings. So if I pick that edge again and zoom in, I can make that dimension permanent there and I can do the same thing to this other one. So I'm just zooming in, picking the edge, and then clicking on the dimension icon next to the dimension I want to make permanent. This one's kind of over on the side, so I'm going to pick it and hover over it until I get a move option. There it is. And move it over to this side. It's a little easier to see. Now I'm going to add parameters to those. So select, add parameter from label, and I'm going to name this one fly long. Okay, so that's the long edge and then I'll take this one, add parameter, and name it fly short. Whoops, fly short. Fly short. Okay, and then maybe we also want to control the the width of these. So if you want to, you can also go to create and you can create an align dimension. So I'm going to create an align dimension. I'm going to set the work plane to be level one. And I'm going to pick this reference plane and I'm going to align it to that face. All right, so you see it just creates a dimension for you. So I just made two dimensions that represent the width of that form. Now I can pick both of those go to a label, add parameter, and make a W parameter. So now we have <clears throat> three parameters. So what can you do with these? Well, you can make different family types. So I'm going to sort of zoom out a little bit and then pan into the corner. I'm going to open up my family types dialog, and you see you have W, fly short, and fly long. And you can change these in here. So I could go to 40 and apply, or I could change the width and go to 20 and apply, right? Or I could go to 40 here and apply. All right, <clears throat> and so you have control over those. Now what you can also do is you can make new family types. So if I go to new, I could name this one 40 by 40 by 30 and click OK. And then I could go to new again and I could make one that was 30 by 30 by 30. Okay. And then I need to update these parameters to reflect that title. It doesn't automatically change it. And if I hit apply, you see that that updates. But the other one is still there, so I can select it and go to apply. And I've got a different one. Now we can make a newer one that, let's say, we'll make it 30 wide by, how about 70 by 40, okay? And then 30 by 70 by 40 and apply. All right, so now we got those three different versions and not only do we have that, but we have the parameters that we can, tr can control um, at a different time. So next time we'll be in auto, in the Revit project and we'll put some floors and roofs and walls on it.